Hi guys, this is Chris, and in the last video, Michael Cresto asked how we could save the current generation to file so that we can restart the algorithm again later from the same point. Thanks a lot for your comment, that's actually a great question, and because it might be useful for other people too, I decided to make this video to cover exactly that. First, we'll create a new C -sharp script. I'm going to call it file read and write because this is going to hold the functions that will actually write and read data from files. Let's open it up in Visual Studio. So we can delete all of the default Unity functions and we can also delete this mono behavior, we don't need it to be attached to any game objects and we can also delete the existing using statements. We do need to include the system.io namespace and we also need to include the binary formatter namespace which is inside this huge huge has using statement. There you go. We're gonna mark this class as static because we don't need to create any instances of it. And we can now begin writing the actual code that's going to write and read data from files. Let's start with a function that's going to write to a binary file. So it's going to be public, static and void. Doesn't return anything. And I'll call it write to binary file. These are going to be generic functions, by the way, which means they will be able to take in any type of object that we want. So the first thing we need to write data to a file is going to be the file path. And then we're going to need the object that we are going to write to that file. Now we need to do three things. First, we need to open our file, or create it if it doesn't exist. Then, we'll need to convert our data to binary. And lastly, we need to grab that binary conversion and actually write it to the file. To open a file, we will write the following. Using, open parenthesis, and then I will declare a variable of type stream, which I will call stream as well, equals file.open, and then we'll pass it in our file path input parameter of this function. This is going to be the full path, by the way, not just the file name. And then, as the last parameter of the file open function, we'll pass in file mode dot create. And then we must open and close curly braces. And now, whatever file operations we must do, we will do them inside these curly braces. And by writing it this way, with its using statement, the file will automatically be closed when we're done with it. Now that we have opened our file, we need to do the other two steps. We need to convert our data to binary and write it to the file. To do that, I'm going to declare a variable called binary formatter that equals a new binary formatter. And using this binary formatter, we will call its serialize method, which receives a stream in this case, is going to be the stream that was created by opening our file. We'll copy it in. And then we will pass it the object that we want to write. And in this last line, we are actually doing our last two steps at once. We are converting our data to binary and writing it to the file at the same time. Our write method is done. And for our read method, I will actually just copy the code that we have and just change a few things. First, it's not going to return void, it's going to return an object of type T. It's going to be called read from binary file and it doesn't need to get the object that it's going to write because it won't write anything. The file mode must be changed to open and the binary formatter, instead of trying to serialize an object into a file, it's going to do the reverse. It's going to deserialize whatever is in a file and it's going to return it. However, it's not going to work right out of the gate. We also need to cast it to be the actual type that we need. So great, now we can read and write generic objects from files. Next, let's make a new C -sharp script and this time we are going to call it genetic save data. This class is going to hold the data that we actually want to save into the files. 
because, thinking about it, we probably don't want to save literally every single thing about the genetic algorithm. The main thing that we need is the population and maybe the generation number and a few other small things. So let's open this up in Visual Studio. As we did previously, we can delete all of the default Unity methods and we also don't need to this class to extend from mono behavior. We will need to keep the system collections generic namespace, but we don't need the Unity engine namespace. And we need the system namespace too. The most important part of this class, and this is vital, we need to mark it as serializable. To do that, we insert brackets at the top of the class, and then we just write serializable. And that's why we need the system namespace. After that, we just need to declare variables to hold the data that we actually need to save. So in this case, since we need to save probably the population, right? And this is just a list of objects that are represented by arrays of genes. So in this case, it's going to be a list of arrays of type T. And I'm going to call this population genes. We must also not forget to also declare the class itself as generic, just as we did with the genetic algorithm itself right here. So other than this, we could also want to save the generation number. And let's, let's leave it at this for now. We could also include other things, but I think this is a good enough example. And now, in our genetic algorithm script, we will need to create two functions. A save generation function, that's going to receive a file path, and a load generation function. For our save method, we'll need to create a new genetic save data. We will tell its generation to be equal to the genetic algorithm's current generation, and we also need to initialize its population genes list. We will tell this list to reserve enough space to hold as many elements as there are in the genetic algorithm's population. You don't really need to do this if you don't want to, but I like to do it. But we haven't actually put any information inside the population genes list, so we'll have to do that now. We'll have to loop through our population and grab only the data that we need to store in the save.populationGenes list. And so, what does this population genes actually represent? This is going to be the genes array of each DNA inside the population list of the genetic algorithm. So we're not copying the whole DNA object, we are just going to need his genes. So what does this mean? We're going to need to fill the population genes list with arrays of type T. These arrays are going to be of size DNA size. We must not forget the new keyword. And so for each element in this population genes list, they're going to hold an array of type T. And the elements of that array, or I mean the contents of that array, are going to be the genes of each DNA individual of our population. So let's use the array.copy method, which is a C-sharp method. And the source array is our population at index i gene.genes. And the destination array is going to be the save.populationGenes at the same index. We also need to specify how many elements from this array we need to copy. And in this case, we want to copy the whole thing. So we'll pass it in the DNA size. And now that we have our save data filled with the data that we actually need to save, let's write it into a file. So we'll go file read write, which is the class that we just created to read and write data from files. And we'll use the write to binary file method. We'll pass it the file path. And the object to write is going to be the save. For the load method, the first thing we have to do is check if the file actually exists. So we'll go system.io file exists, giving it the file path, and if it doesn't exist, we'll return false and exit early from this method. 
If it does exist, then we can return true. But in the meantime, we're gonna have to do something with the file here. Basically, we need to do the reverse of what we did in the save generation method. So first we'll need to read from the file. After that, we'll set the generation of this genetic algorithm to be equal to the generation that we read from the file. And after that, we are going to loop through all of the elements in the save.population genes and copy them over to the population array. So basically we can copy this line here and we can just switch the save.population genes into the first argument and the population into the second argument. And just in case our genetic algorithm wasn't initialized with enough individuals from the start, we'll need to add new ones. And now that we're done with the implementation of saving and loading from files, let's see how we can use this and see how it works. Let's open up the test Shakespeare script and declare a new variable of type string that's going to hold the full path of the file that's going to hold our save data. At the bottom of our start method, we'll set the value of this variable and we're going to use the persistent data path that Unity gives us, which is the recommended place to save files by Unity. And we're going to use that and also add our file name. Let's say genetic save. This means we'll be creating a file called genetic save inside the persistent data path folder. And now that we have somewhere to save our files, let's do some saving. I'm going to go over to the update function and I'm going to tell the genetic algorithm if we have hit generation number 10, then we are going to save at the specified path. Keep in mind that this is just an example. You probably wouldn't want to save in these conditions, but I'm just going to do this to show you how it works. At the time of saving, I will actually disable the script so that we can clearly see that we hit the save point. So let's hit play in the Unity editor. And as soon as we got to generation number 10, it stopped and hopefully it saved. So just to confirm that this is working, let's go over to our save location and check if there's any files in there. So the path that Unity uses to save files in Windows, the easiest way to get there is to use the Windows key on your keyboard followed by R and it's going to open the run window. We'll just type in app data and it's going to open the app data folder. Inside this folder we're going to navigate to a local low and then we'll choose the name of the company that we have associated with our Unity project. In this case, since we didn't define any, it's going to be at default company. Inside there's going to be a folder with the name of our project. There it is, we have a genetic save file and this is our save. Now that we have confirmation that we are actually successfully saving, let's head back to the test Shakespeare script and tell it to load something because actually if we hit play again it's not going to load and it's not going to restart where it was it did restart from zero again that's because we were not telling it to load anything so let's do it by right here going to ga.load generation at full path so if we did not have any saves then it's okay to call this function anyway because it just checks to see if the file exists and if it doesn't it just returns early. Going back to Unity let's hit play again and pay attention to see if we start at 10 and we did. Let's do it again just to confirm. Yep and we did start at 10. So we are loading correctly. Let's try something slightly different. Instead of saving whenever we hit generation number 10 exactly, let's change it to this and now we will be saving every 10 generations. So we'll save at 10, then 20, 30 and so on and so forth. And this is actually something that you might want to do for a real save system where saving every 10 generations is actually a pretty good compromise. And now that we're saving every 10 generations, I would expect it to start from 10 and then stop at 20. There it goes, and then leaving play mode and going again, it should start from 20 and stopping at 30, 
and so on and so forth. And this is it for the save system. I hope you enjoyed this video and see you guys next time.